Hey guys, in this video we're going to teach you how to create this animation so you can switch between pages. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we have to do is create a container where our pages are going to go. So let's create a container. And within this container, we're going to create another one that's going to hold all of our pages. And this container is going to hold each individual page. So let's output that this is page one. And let's also create the button. We're going to store this button in a div. So this is going to be our first button. And this one is going to say next. All right, so when we click on this button, we want to call in a function. So we're going to use onClick. And we're going to call this function slide. And we're going to pass it a parameter name of next. And this means that we're going to go over to the next page. All right. One final thing we're going to add in here is another class, one. And the reason we want to do this is so we can add CSS properties that pertain to this page and to this page only. All right. So let's go ahead and select all of this shift alt down three times. So one, two, three, and let's change this from one to two and this to two as well. All right. So for page number two, we're going to create another button. So let's shift alt down and the top button. We're going to change this to prev. So this is going to take us back to the previous page. All right. And we can copy this button. And we can paste it over here since we're going to need it here too. All right. So we're going to change this to three and this to three. And this is our page four. And this is going to be a previous button. So let's change this. All right. And that should do it for the HTML. So we have our four pages. Let's move on to the CSS. All right, let's start by removing the default padding and margin from all of the elements. So let's set padding to zero and margin to zero. All right, for the container, we want it to take up the entire screen. So we're going to set the width to 100%. And of course, the height is also going to take up the entire screen. So we're going to set that to 100 VH. And let's use overflow hidden because we don't want there to be any scroll bars not e not on the right or even on the bottom of the screen all right now for the uh, pages container uh, we want these pages to be right next to each other so let's use display flex and we're going to give this container a width of 400 percent and that's because each page is equivalent to 100%. So we have port four pages. So we're going to make this 400%. All right. And we're also going to use a box sizing border box. And this is more important if we were not making the container a width of 100%. Let's say that we made the width 500 pixels, for example, then this would be more and would come more in handy in, in that situation. But right now it's not really taking any effect. But just in case you wanted to change the container to something else than 100%, um, this would come into play. So let's just keep that there. All right. Now, each individual page is going to be a width of 100%. That way it takes up the entire space of the container, which is also 100%. And let's also give this a height of 100 VH. And in order to place these items in the center of the screen we're going to use display flex and justify content center align item center so they could be in the middle and let's use a flex direction column so they could be you know stacked on top of each other like that and let's give them a, a little bit of space with gap 10 pixels and we're also going to add a transition here of all 
and it's going to last uh, one second. And what this is going to do is each time that we click the next or previous button, it's going to take us over to the next page, but it's going to do so like it's going to slide over there versus if we don't add this, it's just going to take us directly to the other page and it's not going to look very smooth. All right. So that's pretty much it. The last thing we're going to do is change the color of each page. So for page number one, we're going to use background color and go ahead and go with whatever color you want. So for page number two, I'm going to use background color and I'm going to use orange for that one. Or page number three, let's change the background color. Um, let's go with whatever. I'm just going to use blue and page number four background color. I'm going to use violet for this one. All right. And that's going to be it for the CSS. All right. For our JavaScript, the first thing we want to do is get access to all of our pages and store them in a variable. So let's store them in this variable called pages. Let's get access to all of them by using query selector all. And we gave each page a class name of page. All right, let's create another variable called translate amount. We're going to set this equal to 100 and you guys will see what we're going to do with that in a moment. All right, one final variable translate. We're going to set that equal to a zero and you guys will see what we're going to do with that in a moment. All right, so each time that we click on the button here, we want to call in a function which we decided that we were going to call slide and this function either has prev coming in or it has next coming in all right let's create that function and we're going to grab either the next or the prev through this direction here all right so for the actual body in here we want to check whether the direction is next or it's previous and this is how we're going to do that so we're going to check is the direction next question mark if it's not then we're going to set translate we're going to subtract or equal we're going to concatenate here but subtra subtracting 100 so we're going to set that equal to translate amount let me go ahead and expand this so we can see this a little bit better but if it is equal to next then we want to do the opposite that we did here so we can just copy this paste it here and instead of subtracting we're going to add all right and you guys will understand the purpose of either subtracting or adding 100 to translate in a moment all right now for each page so we're gonna go through the pages because this when we do query selector all page it creates an array here so we have an array of all of the pages so we're going to go through each of these pages and what we want to do is we add a, we want to add a CSS property to each one of these pages. So let me show you what this property is going to be. So we're going to use style here and the property name is called transform. So this is the property that we're going to add to each one of the pages when the user clicks on this button. And we're either going to um, like I said, we're either going to add 100 or subtract 100, depending on if the user clicks on the next or the previous button. So let's go ahead and set this translate value here. So with transform, we're going to use something called translate X. And to add the value, we're going to use the money symbol. And in here, we're going to include the translate variable. And don't forget to add a percent out here this is indicating that it's a percentage okay so that should be it so let's go back to our project here i'm just going to refresh that to make sure that all the updates are taking effect and sure enough they are so there it is there's the previous um, and yeah so that's how you create this effect of sliding pages now if you wanted to add any content to each individual page well that's quite easy just Go back to your html file and right here where it says page one this is where you're gonna you know add whatever it is that you want to add to your page for example you could add text um, you could add images whatever it is that you want to add all right so that's going to be it for this tutorial please make sure to hit the like button if you found this useful and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching